Hi everybody, it's Sam here and I'm back with another handbag gift bag tutorial. This is actually going to be the last one of my weekly series, but I am going to still continue using this book and I'll probably be uploading maybe one to two a month rather than one every week. So today's is this one here and it's this book style here and it's a Jean-Paul Gaultier one from 1993 and it says here a bag of biblical proportions rewrites the book on drama queen accessories. Now I'm going to adapt it slightly because I don't want my hand all over all of this detail so I'm going to be doing some heat embossing here but everything else I think in my mind is going to look just like this even this little piece here. So let's start. So the paper pad I'm using is this one, it's Lipstick Basics, it's a Craft Sensations pad. I've had this not too long, so it may still be available in the stores. Again, if I can share any links, I will in the description box below. So the bag itself is pretty straightforward, it's down to the decoration really, that makes it look like that book. So you want two pieces of 12 by 10 and a half, and along the 12 inch side, you're going to score at half an inch, three and a half, Ignore those other ones. That was an idea I was going with before and I've changed my mind, but I can cover that. So half an inch and three and a half. You can also score at two down to about six inches. OK, and then pop it on the short side and you want to score at three all the way down. Now you want to do that on two pieces. Then for the closure, I've got this piece here, which is six by eight and a half. And along the six inch side, you're just going to score it two and four. And then I've started to prepare the handles because I'm going to add handles rather than the way that they, it shows in that book. But I've got these strips here are 12 by, I've done them at five eighths of an inch, but that's because of the size of the D-ring I'm using. So if you don't have a D-ring, you might be cutting a square piece of card and then a smaller square inside. So you've got these as a square shape. My ones are... 25 these are the 25 mil again i'll link these ones by 20 mil but any size you want so i've just had to cut all these obviously to fit within this piece so you may need to alter that next you want to fold and burnish all of your score lines with this one where you scored down to six inches you just want to make that a valley on the side there and just pinch it it's just going to help you you can see there how it's going to close the side of the bag Okay, so next you want your half inch tab on the left hand side. You're going to cut up this piece here and then cut along this bit of the score line, just removing that tiny section. And then you're going to cut up this score line here. And then I always like to just take a wedge off of the side of that square piece. If I just lay that down, you can see I'm just taking a little bit away and then just take a little bit off of the side here and here. And you want to do that on the other piece. And again, just ignore any of these score lines here. That was a another idea I had. So once you've got that, you then want to cut yourself two pieces of your pattern paper. You may be doing yours all in pattern, but I just want to strengthen this and I want the contrast of the block black and then this pattern here. So this is the whole size of the front and the back of the card. So this is eight and a half by seven and a half. So you'll want two pieces and you're going to stick it in that section there. And you can see this is the other one that I've already done. OK, and just fold around and just make sure it's not hanging over the edge and down the bottom there. And then if you do have any overhang, you see I've got a very small amount there. You can just trim that away. And always do it from this, the back side because that way you'll be able to cut that away really nicely. Like so. So that's going to strengthen the front and the back of our gift bag. Next, I want to attach the side tab. So I'm just going to grab my quick grab glue here. And you just want to run your glue all down that tab and then just sit this piece over the top. And always make sure that the base score lines are all lined up there so just give that a minute to dry and then flip the whole thing over fold over this one side leave the half leave the side there behind so you've just got this in front and then bring over this side you'll see you've got your tab there again add your glue all down there okay so again just sit that one over and then lay that one down and it should line up perfectly okay and now you'll be able to push your sides in 
So flip it over and decide which now you want to be the front or the back. So I'm going to go with this one as the front. So I'm going to fold that one out first and I'm going to fold the back one in. And I'm going to add my glue all over this section here. Again, this is the Kalau All Purpose, so it's just going to really strengthen the bottom of our bag. And then fold in the sides, just go over with some more glue. And then you just want to seal the bottom with the last piece. So that's all reinforced with all of the layers, and then you can just go inside and just push that down and you'll have a nice finish there as well. Okay, so now we've got all of the base ready. Next, you want this piece here and this is where we're going to do some heat embossing. So you've got your three two inch sections. It's the middle one where I want to start embossing my design. Now, you might not want to heat emboss, you might just want to stamp. So I've just picked out some stamps here and I'll show you the ones that I've used in a moment. But I want to just create that kind of spine of the book. So it's, this is my title and then I've got this decoration and then I've got another piece for the bottom, which is the same as the top one there. And then this is going to be for a 40th birthday. So I'm going to stamp the number 40. So it's almost like it's volume 40 of the book. So the stamp set I've used is this one here, which I think I picked up from the works years ago. It's an old set. I've then used this one here, which was from Laura Ashley, and it's called Comnimara. And then the sentiment is the woodware clear magic, and it's called It's the Little Things. And I've used the one here that says you're not getting older, you're increasing in value. Again, I just thought that worked quite well with the designer handbag theme. So you just want to start kind of positioning where you want everything to go. And I'm going to use my stamping platform so I can make sure I get a nice stamped image. So just... Get that right in where it needs to be so just don't rush this part just spend a bit of time making sure it's all lined up and it's you know just how you want it and i can pick all of that up at the same time now i am using three different brands of stamps so what you might find will happen is they're slightly different heights so i can already feel that the the flourish and that big sentiment are kind of the same height but the 40 is lower so i'm actually going to do that later or what you know when i've done all the others so just you just put your hand over you'll be able to feel which ones are higher so just check that now the key with any heat embossing is the prep so you want to make sure that you use an anti-static powder some people use corn flour but i like the little bags you've also got the the light pens and it's like a brush on the end but you just want to make sure you go over all the area and make sure you really do wipe it over there and i always like to just go over the tips of my fingers as well because you've got your natural oils and any hand creams and things that you may have used you know they're going to pick that up i will link up my top tips um, embossing video heat embossing video it's really good if you're new to it i definitely recommend checking that out so that's all prepped next you want to make sure that your watermark ink is nice and juicy if it's dry you're just not going to get a good impression so i'm not long re-inked this one so this will be fine so i'm just going over stamped images there now because i'm using a black you should be able to see this stamp clearer than if it was on a white card don't worry if it lifts and it sticks that's why we've got the magnets there but can you see already that's starting to look like the spine of our book so i'm just going to pop that back in I don't think I even need to go over that again. I'm, I'm really pleased with the way that that's transferred. So I'm now going to remove these and I'm going to place the 40 and get that one stamped. OK, so that's everything stamped. Then I'm using the Nouveau. This is the silver embossing powder. And I'm just going to dump that all over. And then just tap that off. And you can see because I brushed that powder over, there's very little that has stayed stuck. I've got a little bit here and I think that's because I touched it more there when I went to put the numbers down. So all you need to do is just grab a brush and just brush away any little stray pieces that you may get. Okay, so once you're happy with 
all of the stamping and the powders where you need it to be, you can then heat set it. So you wanna make sure that you let your heat gun warm up for at least 20 to 30 seconds. You want it nice and hot. The less heat that is applied to this, the less warping you're gonna get. Okay, and just as that starts to cool, just get it into the shape that you want it. But you can see that I've got very little warping and it works with this style anyway, if it's slightly, you know, out of shape. I'm really pleased with that. It really does look like the spine of a book. Okay, then I want to just add some score lines. So this is optional, but I do think it, again, it's going to just add to the look of this book style bag. So I'm just, from that score line, I'm going to then score every one eighth of an inch. So just along every track in my scoreboard i'm actually going to use my metal stylus i just find i get a much deeper line okay it's easy to do it after you've heat embossed but you may find it even easier to do it before you've heat embossed if there is some warping then I'm going to pop it along this side and I, I really just want to kind of just find a track and just score in between these sections. So I'm just wherever my stylist kind of wants to go, just to break up these sections. Like so but now can you see that really does again, if you look on those older style books, you get that effect and that's how it looks as well on that bag in the book. So now I'm just adding a bit of shape into that center piece again just so it looks like that book as you can see now that starts to curve out so when we sit it on here it's lifted can you see there so what i want to do first of all is add my glue to the left hand side and that's what's going to stick to the back plenty of glue and then you're just going to line up the, the score line here with the top of the bag. If you open it up this way, it's easier for you to see and move it around. Okay, so once that's stuck, then this piece will come over and it will just slightly arch, creating that uh, book effect. How you stick the flap down is entirely up to you. You might want to use magnets, but I've got the black Velcro, these are the 16 mil, 5 eighths of an inch. So I'm just gonna use those. So I'm gonna pop um, one there and one there. And then just line up the flap with the score line here, the first one. Um, get that all in place. Might be better if I do it that way, there we go. And then just let that where it needs to and then you can carefully lift it up and then just push those down okay next i'm going to finish off these ones here so i'll just show you what i did so i've just got my cardstock here which is the same width as the inside section there of the d-ring and then i'm just going to add my glue like so and then just wrap that around and just hold that in place for a second and then i'm just trimming it so it's the same as the other ones that i've already done and that measurement is just over one inch and those were three quarters actually wide and then i've got this piece here which is the 12 by three quarters and it's going to go through one end there and then add my glue and again just wrap that around like so and then i'm going to pop this through but what i want to make sure is that they're the same length so i'm just going to sit that one down there so i can see how much i can wrap around so yeah it's a little bit shorter but it's fine it's still gonna join up and just hold that in place again Okay, next I'm going to attach my handle. So I'm popping mine on here. If you want longer handles, then stick them onto this section here. 
And if you're going to put something heavier in it, then I would recommend sticking it onto this part and not onto the flap. I know what I'm going to be putting in here and it's very light. So I can put my handle on the front there. And then I've got these little embellishments, which are going to go on the top there as well. So, yeah, it, like I said, if you're going to go longer, then I would just attach, um, you know, two pieces of 12 by 12 together and maybe trim them down. Or you may be using ribbon. I'm using my hot glue for this as well. So I'm going to place one down first. You don't want too much because you don't want it to kind of ooze out the sides. In fact, I'm going to do this on the back first so I can use this as a test run. I'm going to stick that one there. Just hold that for a second. And then I can bring this one round. So again, I'm just going to pop a bead of glue in the middle there. And I'm just going to eyeball mine, but you may want to measure okay so that's now really secure and then i'm just going to do the same on the front and just line it up with that one and then i'm just finishing it off with those embellishments so i'm just using my hot glue to stick those down okay and then one last detail so i've just punched a little one inch circle I'm just going to add some glue onto kind of the top half there and just pop it behind the front there in the middle like so so there you have it a finished gift bag or book bag as i should call this one absolutely love it I just think that just totally transforms this it's one of my favorites definitely nice size as well just bring back over the inspiration so you can see here i'm glad i've changed the handle i just didn't want to hide all of that lovely detail there you've got that and then i imagine that one will open from you lifting that piece i was trying to when I was looking at it, think how that would open. Or maybe the front is actually on this side and this is actually the back of it. I don't know. But anyway, there is my version of the Jean-Paul Gaultier bag from 1993. So I hope you've enjoyed this one. As always, uh, thank you for watching. And I love seeing your versions of the bags that I've been sharing over on the Mixed Up Crafters Facebook group. The series is still continuing, but like I said, it's not going to be every week now. It's going to be like every two to maybe every three weeks or something i just i need to now use the bags that i've made otherwise i won't fit them in my craft room if you just uh, recently joined my channel and you're liking the gift bags that i've been sharing check out my playlist i've got over 100 different gift bags there so there's plenty to keep you going if you um, haven't made any of those before as always thank you for watching and i'll be back again soon